Ovim je zastrašujućim izavama prije nepunih mjesec dana britanski top model Sophie Enderton šokirala ovdašnju, ali i svjetsku javnost. Osim priznanja da je zbog prevelike ljubavi prema kukainu nekoliko puta bila na rubu suicida, te da ju od smrti spasila samo sreća, Sophie Enderton je u ekskluzivnom intervju za Red Carpet priznala je da je za njen ponor krivni manjen i više nego nogometaš hrvatskih korijena Mark Bosnić. He actually beat me up, took my money, basically spent all my money on drugs. I ended up with a lot of debt with drug dealers. And I think he was rather angry at the whole world and the drugs just fueled that. I've never seen anyone go from naught to as much drugs as he did. I mean, he just went for it. Um, and I, I think he was hell-bent on wanting to try and kill himself. I'm amazed he survived. I'm amazed he didn't have a heart attack. I'm glad he didn't, but I'm amazed. So when did it all start? It? Um, well, I started modeling at 14 and a half. Um, and I mean, at that time, the industry was rife with it. And I was in Paris, and it was the heroin chic age. And I've always been very curvy, you know, naturally, you know, very healthy looking. And they wanted me to be much skinnier, like, or basically ribs, you know, just <laughs> like a bag of bones. Um, and um, every day I go into the agency, they're like, what have you eaten today? To the point it got to, I had an apple a day, and they told me not to even eat the apple. I mean, so cocaine, you know, was a natural choice, you know, and I've developed really bad anorexia, and the cocaine enabled my anorexia. And before I knew it, by the time I was 18, I was, I was fully addicted. You said at one point that you reached such a low level that you went into prostitution to pay for the cocaine. I was in a very, I, I got into a really dark place. I'm not really going to go into it, but it was a very dark place at the beginning of 2004. I ended up doing things which I'm not particularly proud of just to get through that period, but it was a choice of life or death. It wasn't, and because I was a drug addict and I was in active addiction, and the drugs were the, I think, to be honest, the drugs at that point were the only thing that could stop me from harming myself by, you know, by making any other choices. And then I finally got into recovery for three years and then relapsed again. <laughs> Um, and now I'm happy, I'm happy, I can say I'm back in recovery and, you know, life is really good. And I think for me, I'm lucky, I've, I've changed all my friends, the people I, I hang out with. So how much money did you spend on the cocaine weekly, monthly? I'm probably spending about 1,500 a week. I mean, really disgusting amounts. But then it's the other things is when you're doing cocaine, you shop. You know, you lose all sense of reality. So credit cards, it's just, you go and buy, you know, you feel bad the next day you go and buy clothes. So it's, it's like the knock-on effect. It's not just the amount you spend on drugs, it's everything else. Do you think there's a lot of drugs in showbiz and fashion industry? Um, definitely in showbiz. Um, yeah, there's a lot of celebrities who lie through their teeth. You'd be amazed at the things that I know um, and people I know who do drugs. But I mean, obviously, I'm not here to, you know, that's their business, it's not mine. If somebody put it in front of me, I'd still find it hard to say no. And that's why I don't hang out with people who do it. And I'm very honest about that, but I'm, you know, I'm a drug addict. You know, whether I'm in an active addiction or not, I'm in recovery, but I never know what life's going to throw at me, so I have to be very careful and protect myself. Lately, we're also in Scandal in Sound magazine for the tape where people could see that obviously you are still taking cocaine. It was a complete setup, but as my, you know, my closest girlfriends, they were just like, I, I didn't beat myself up. I was like, okay, yes, it happened. Three lines, I went to bed at 10, I went home at 10.30, called my sponsor, crying my eyes out and went to a lot of meetings that weekend and I, I moved on and I think because I came I, I spoke with the son the following Saturday and I said look yes it happened but I've never lied about being an addict. How did this scandal happen? Who set you up? It's really really sad it's, I feel more sorry for the person who did it because I, I don't have to I mean I made a mistake as in the but, but I haven't hurt anyone I mean doing that setting somebody up and purposely putting drugs in front of them and then you know they're an addict is actually quite disgusting. The same thing happened to Kate Moss a few years ago. Have you spoke with her about it? To be honest, I, you know, I mean, I think both of us would prefer to forget that these things have happened. But no, I mean, I felt terribly sorry for her. I mean, that was, that was nasty. And it was obvious it was one of her friends who sold her out. And I know how that feels. And, but she's ridden that, you know, ridden past it. She's got on with her life. And I think we're quite similar in that respect. We're both survivors and we both take it on the chin. You know, if you make a mistake, you just put your hands up, move on. You know, all these celebrities and people who lie go, it wasn't cocaine, it was, it was uh, this thing called snow, which, I mean, why, I'm sorry, why would you want to talk something which wasn't a drug? I mean, why put something up, you know, it just doesn't make any sense, it's just laughable. How did you become addicted? I mean, did you I was somebody born an first addict. Off? No, I was born an addict, it's in me, I've tried every other drug and nothing, I've never been addicted to anything else. I, I was born a cocaine addict 
And I do believe that. It's actually the opening of my autobiography, I was born a cocaine addict. So I do truly believe, fundamentally, I'm a cocaine addict. If you now look at your career and all the things and campaigns that you've done, what do you think, how much money would you have if you haven't spent such a big amount on cocaine? If I hadn't, if I had never become a cocaine addict, I'd probably have an extra quarter of a million in my account. What could be the best thing that you achieved in your modeling career? Well, obviously my big campaign, which was my big rate, was I was the original brunette. I was the Wonder Bra model for three years, uh, which I shot with her Brits when I was 19. And then with David LaChapelle and... I can't remember the other photographer's names, it's gone from my head. Um, and then I've done all the other campaigns like Pantene, um, I've done uh, BO5, Sony, Pepsi, Fabergé, Cotonic, uh, Triumph, Myla, La Perla. I mean, I, I've had a really good career. I mean, I've done catwalk for Vivian Westwood, for Chanel, for Valentino, for Jean Francis Fede, Escada. Um, and so now I had a really good run of it. Now it's like kind of now I've hit 32. I'm going to go. I'm going into the anti-aging. That's another 15-year career. It's great. give a message to anyone I'm like don't touch that first drug because it's never going to be just one line or one spliff or one ecstasy it's you know unless you know you don't know whether you're an addict or not so why even risk it